This is DB Designs and Sewing Australia. I'm Deb, and if you'd like to see what I've been making in the last nine days and an alteration and a bit of a fabric haul, please stay tuned. Well, first of all, a great big welcome to all my subscribers and to anyone new. I have got a fair few new subscribers of late, which is wonderful. I really appreciate you watching and I hope you like the content and I absolutely love your comments. So please keep commenting. Now, I haven't been on for a while because last week I looked after my granddaughter and so I was at my daughter's house and so not sewing for some of the time. But what I did get done was the first thing I got was a Vera knit top from Forget Me Not Patterns. Now, this is in a green cable knit that I've had in my stash for ages. I've actually got, a bit distracting, I've actually got a yo-yo set. So the Style Arc yo-yo set in this fabric. Um, it's not the easiest fabric in the world to sew. The yo-yo top's okay. You do have a bit of a... With this cable, the band doesn't like to sit really, really flat. Now I've made lots of the forget-me-not Vera knit tops and always had a great success with the neck band. This one, I'm guessing this fabric just doesn't really have enough recovery. So if I actually had some, I guess, rib, real ribbing in this colour, you could do a rib band in it. And it's the reason that I've not made the yo-yo top again. I've certainly made the yo-yo skirt again, but of course it doesn't have a knit band. It has a bit of elastic in the waist and the rest is just hemmed. And so I might actually give that yo-yo another go because this cable knit actually looks really, really nice and it feels nice but it doesn't have fabulous recovery. So I think I've not given that yo-yo top enough of a go because it was in this fabric. So I thought, oh, it's really boxy and really big, but it may not be that boxy and that big depending what fabric you make it in. So that was the first thing I made and I will wear this in winter time. I've got it on in the photo with um, some pants but I'll probably most likely wear it with jeans. I actually make it in a 42 and that might seem like a big size for me to make, but the other ones that I've made and I've made them in a 42 fit perfectly. So remember the multicolored one in the beautiful knit um, that I made last year, that fits perfectly and that's the same size. So, I think it's just the fabric. If you have fabric that doesn't have very much recovery, you can have a little bit of an issue with it. Now, the other thing I did was had a go at fixing the Nerida Hanson remnant top. If you remember the Nerida Hanson remnant top, put a photo of what it looked like. It's really distracting. I'll put a photo of I'll put a photo of what it looked like before up on the screen and. When I looked at it, I love the fabric. It's just beautiful fabric. And so what I did was I ran some elastic through the neck of it. It's probably a little bit thicker than what I call hat elastic. It's actually what I used for mask making. And so it's quite soft elastic, but I ran that through the hem and through the cuffs. Now it's made the cuffs great, I didn't really want to take anything out of the sleeve because it's got a fabulous billow sleeve. Like look at the size of that sleeve. And it has pulled the neck, by putting the elastic in the neck, it has pulled, made the neck come up so that the shoulders are sitting in the correct place for the sleeve to start. So it's sitting right here because it's got really a very nice sleeve head on it. So it's sort of, uh, it's not gathered, it's got tucks in it. Now I was watching Nerida Hanson the other night and she was, I think she's remaking the remnant top pattern 
uh, because she thinks it's too big. So possibly it will have some changes made to it and make it a little bit smaller or I'll just make it in a smaller size. So now for me, that's wearable. When I put it on, I do have to put it in the right position uh, because it's trying to pull it up in the front, but I don't think I've put too much elastic in it or pulled the elastic too tight to get the shoulders in the right spot. So that's in, um, this is all Nerida Hanson fabric. And the cord is even in a different Nerida Hanson fabric and that neckband as well. So pretty happy with how that turned out. And that was the image of the Nerida Hanson um, remnant top. Because somebody asked me if they could get it and when I looked it up on the site, it wasn't up there. But then I thought I heard Nerida say that she was redoing um, that particular pattern. So it's probably going to be re-released I would uh, expect. Now the next thing I made were the lander pants. Now I've made several pairs of lander pants before, you've all seen them. I've got the lightweight denim ones, I've got the blue and white stripe heavy denim ones, I've got the purple corduroy ones. can't remember if I've got any other ones, but this is the lander pant. And as you can see, it's got a button fly front. Now I actually use the zipper extension pack and I always make them full length down to the floor. I had previously made them in a size 14 and so the other ones are really big. So I thought I'm going to make a size 12. So I made the size 12 and I did a two centimetre reduction in the rise on the back and the front. And I took, and I had two and a half centimetre seam allowances in the sides. And as you'll see from the photos, they're not tight. I think I could easily use a size 10. And every time I make it, I redraft a new pattern off the existing pattern. So now I've got a 14, now I've got a 12, and I suspect that I will make the 10s next in it. I'd actually like to see what they're like with the button fly. Someone asked me if, if I ever made it with the button fly, and I haven't. But I have had button fly jeans before. I think they were Levi's, but it's that whole fat tummy thing. But it's not something you really need to worry about with these pants because these pants are quite loose. I mean, the tightest place in me they are is across the stomach, but I made them in this cotton linen stretch twill. So another one of the reasons I sized down was this is a stretch fabric, but it's not hugely stretching. Like it's got a bit of stretch in it, but it's not like stretch jeans. Uh, Really, really happy with them. I absolutely love them. I don't have a pair of pants in this colour. Surprise, surprise. So I did say it's the linen cotton stretch twill, only a slight stretch. And I got it from May Design when I was in Bright on Nerida Hanson Big Day Out. And um, two of us were, went to um, Mikey's place. The colour is called Brown Sugar and they are really, really nice. Really nice pockets on these pants. I know what else I did. Besides the two and a half centimetre seam allowance, oh, it's a two and a, I did a two and a half centimetre seam allowance and on the sides, only on the sides. And the seam allowance is usually 1.25. So I doubled the seam allowance and I took in those back darts by 0.6 of a centimetre on each of them. So as you can see on the inside there, I ended up taking them in. 
just to make the pants a little bit smaller again. So I'm thinking definitely the 10 next time. Probably depends what fabric, but yeah, really happy with, oh, I love this pattern. I think it's a really good pattern, as you can tell by how many pairs of pants I've got. Um, really fabulous, fabulous pattern. And then I thought, well, I need to start to use up some of my scraps of fabric. And the other night when I went out with my three daughters, bar hopping, cocktail bar hopping, um, who would have known there were so many cocktail bars near where I live? I didn't know, I'd never been to any of them before. Um, and I wore the vetiver top by French Navy. It's a really, really nice top, really comfortable top. I think I wore it with dark denim jeans and the purple over-dyed um, overcoat, gunslinger coat. And so I had some of this Ink Navy Washed Linen Visco Blend that I got from the Dahlia Society and I had previously made the Bella Dress by Tazuti in it and I had enough of that fabric left to make a vetiver top by French Navy. And so I didn't do the buttons down the front. I actually um, placed the centre front on the fold. So fold on the front, fold on the back. So there's no centre front seams or button placket. And it's got, as you can see, princess seams front and back and what I forgot to tell you the other day when I made the other one is that it is all um, French seamed so it's hard to see in the navy blue it's French seamed and then you stitch down the French seam so these are French seamed and the French seam is actually stitched down makes for a very very neat um, neat garment on the inside. The only thing I didn't French seam, and I'm not sure if they tell you to or not because I'd have to look at the instructions and I didn't, is um, is the sleeves. And sometimes I find sleeves can be a bit bulky if you French seam them. So, um, and so this is the size, this is size F and it's style B and the length of it, so that's the style that doesn't have the frill on the bottom. And so, but the hem length, so that I could get it out of the fabric I had left, I used size A length of style B. Does that make sense? So if I'd used my size in style B, it probably would have been this much longer, but I didn't have enough fabric to do that. So I thought, hey, I'm pretty short. So, and I can, you know, the other one is a button up one, but I don't need the buttons to get this on and off. Even though it's French seamed, it's not tight fitting. It is quite a blouse. And so really happy with that because it's a really comfortable top. Um, sort of length it is, wear it with jeans. You could either wear it tucked in or a French tuck or just wear it out. Um, I think when I've got it on, I've got it on with these pants, just to show you what it looked like. But I probably would actually wear it with uh, a tight pair of jeans, not with loose jeans. So if I was gonna wear a loose top, I'd wear like fitted pants. And if I'm going to wear a tight top, I might wear looser pants usually. But really, really happy with that, so now, if you remember, I am part of the Sewists of Oz and we are running a challenge and our challenge is called Sew Autumn Denim 2024. And we've got fab two fabulous prizes, both kindly donated by the Day Society. One is a June bespoke box. How fabulous is that prize? And also another prize is a $50 voucher to the Data Society. Thank you so much, Kristen. That's so generous of you. And the other thing we've got is Weft and Warp 
in the ACT, which is the Australian Capital Territory, Capital Australia, um, have offered us a 24% discount on denim for the months of April and May. And absolutely fabulous. Now, the code for your discount on Wefton Warp is Autumn Denim 24. Now, I think I last time I said Autumn Denim 2024, but it's Autumn Denim 24. I will put it in the description down below as well. And the discount certainly works. I got this beautiful, this looks like it's orange, but it's actually quite, quite a dark, dark crimson red. Let me see if I go into a different light, if it looks different, because it's such a beautiful colour. No, still doesn't show you the real colour. The real colour is a dark, dark red. And this is a stretch denim. It's not um, coloured on the other side, but it is really easy to see which side's which. So that's the right side. And that's the wrong side. So you can actually see that fabric down here is the right side and the other one's the wrong side. You can see that it looks different. So should be easy to use. And Rebecca from Weft and Warp put a card in, said, hope you love this red denim. I have a pair of ash jeans in it and they're my favorite. So it's not the jeans I'm making next. I'm actually making, I need to wash it. Um, I'm actually making the ginger jeans and I'm doing a step-by-step -step how I make the ginger jeans. The other things I bought, I actually got my ginger jeans pattern reprinted because after I'd made them, which I've made them two or three times, um, they did an update on the pattern. And so I wasn't sure what the update was. Show you what they look like. So there's high rise, high rise skinny leg and low rise stovepipe leg. So their stovepipe and their skinny. I guess they're tighter in the ankles, but they look pretty similar. I guess in this image, you can really see the difference. The skinny ones are just much narrower at the bottom. But I do believe the update on the pattern is you can have low rise stovepipe or skinny and you can have high rise stovepipe or skinny. I think that is what the update to the pattern is. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get it reprinted and um, and see if that's what the different is, difference is. Because that would be using the most up-to-date ginger jeans pattern. Um, both times I've made the high rise, which are the ones I've got on now, and I've made the technically called low rise, but they come up to my waist. I've made them both stovepipe, so I must have overlaid the pattern on each other and made a pattern myself to make the high rise stovepipe because I didn't want skinny leg jeans. I didn't want them tight right down on my calves. So I got that pattern reprinted out. I also got printed out the Carla pattern by um, Swim Style Patterns, which is the like loungewear set. So it's a top and it's pants. So instead of wearing tracksuit pants, probably a little bit dressier than tracksuit pants. And they probably would actually be quite good in some of this type of cable knit, but you'd also probably have the issue with the top. 
in it. But I haven't got any fabric for that yet. But I mean, you can even make it in like track, track suit fabric if you wanted to. Um, mm, and I was going to take a trip soon to the fabric store and see what the thicknesses there merino comes in. You could make it in a ponty. I'm sure you all know the set that I'm talking about. I'll pop a picture up here because I will have a picture um, somewhere in my things. Um, but it's a beautiful set. So I got that pattern printed on AO. I also purchased the Atelier Jupe Zoe blouse. So now this, I thought that would be a really handy pattern and you probably could be able to get it out of a small amount of fabric. I bought this from the Dahlia Society and Kristen also had a remnant of this fabric. Now this is called Atelier Jupe Large Dark Blue Floral Beige Visco. Oh yes, I'm sure I can get a blouse out of that. Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? Just quite wintry. A bit of a pop of cream in it. So I bought those things. And the other thing I bought was one and a half meters of knit fabric. And this is called Utopia Monochrome Textured Graphic Print Knit. Try saying that quickly five times. And this it's actually, can you see that it's grey? That's grey and black. You can see it's grey when it comes back here a bit. Um, yeah, beautiful fabric. You can tell it's grey. Grey edges on it. So I bought one half metres of that to make some sort of a knitwear jumper. Not sure. If I'll make another Vera or if I'll make a different top. I've got a fair few jumper patterns now. So I wonder how much I'd have left over if I could get a vest out of it as well as a jumper. We'll have to see. Because that might look nice over a um, black turtleneck jumper. Oh, that's what I'm wearing now. A Trudy turtleneck. The one I've got in every colour. So that was my adventures for the week and I did see the postman which means that my um, Dahlia Society bespoke box will be being delivered soon. I've got notification that it's coming today so fingers crossed it comes and I'll put up another video. Please like and subscribe. Don't forget about our So Autumn Denim 2024 and wonderful prizes to be won and you can enter anything that's made out of denim that you want and you can recycle things so in other words you can turn jeans into skirts and all that type of thing so you can renovate an item but fabulous prizes and the discount from weft and warp and you've got to be in it to win it don't you Please like and subscribe. I will be coming back soon with the start of my ginger jeans sew along. Let's call it a sew along and not a tutorial. So, and I am going to try and break it up into smaller increments because the last sew along I did, the last one was an hour and it's just too long. It's too long for people to watch. It's too long for me to make. So, Everyone have a fabulous sewing week. I am actually going to be able to get some sewing done. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.